let me point out to you guys that there is a difference between an empirical formula and a molecular formula. And I'm going to explain this difference, and then I'm going to go back to that problem we just worked of the nitrogen and the oxygen and figuring out the formula. And, uh, and we're going to add something to that. Okay? An empirical formula, it shows the relative number and types of atoms in a compound. The relative number and the types of atoms in a compound. Whereas a molecular formula, it shows the actual number and the types of atoms in a compound. Okay, so that's the definition, but what does that mean? <clears throat> glucose. Y'all, glucose is formula. That's not one I would expect you to know, but I'll tell you, the molecular formula for glucose is C6H12O6. That is its molecular formula. That tells us that in a molecule of glucose, there are actually six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. That is the actual number and the type. But now the empirical formula for glucose would just show us a relative number. So it's like, do you guys see that the 6, 12, and 6 all have a common multiple, can all be reduced? Okay, so you want to guess what you think the empirical formula might look like? C1H2O1. Might look like C1H2O1, right? And that indeed is the empirical formula for glucose. Do you see it's like the simplest ratio? Right. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Didn't pick up good. Um, so all the empirical formula tells us is that there's twice as many hydrogens as there are carbon. Okay, and the number of carbons and the number of oxygens, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but we don't actually know how many. So if we go back to this one that we just worked, where we were calculating the formula given those percents, and we came up with the formula to be NO2. Guys, what we actually came up with is the empirical formula for nitrogen dioxide. So how, what would we do to come up with the molecular formula? I'm going to add something to that problem. So we came up with NO2. What if I told you that the molar mass, y'all know what a molar mass is? Yeah, when you add up all the masses of the molecules based on how many there are, you know, look at the periodic table and, okay. What if I told you that the molar mass of this compound, and I'm talking about the one that's the 30.45% nitrogen and that 69.55% oxygen that we just worked, the molar mass of this compound is around 92 grams per mole. If we have the molar mass, we can then determine the molecular formula. Exactly. If that's why I said, go ahead and figure out the mass of NO2. One N, you're exactly right. One N is what? Molar mass of 14. Each oxygen is 16, but there's two of them. Okay, so y'all don't even need a calculator, right? You can do that in your head. It's 32 plus 14, which is 46. Does everybody see where I'm coming up with that? 46. I said two oxygens plus the one nitrogen. So, in other words, y'all, the molar mass of that NO2, that's 46. But I'm telling you that it needs to add up 
to be 92. How far is 46 from 92? It needs to be a nice, clean distance away. In other words, what do I do to 46 to get 92? I just double it, don't I? So if I need to double 46 to get to 92, then I need to double this to get the molecular formula, don't I? Okay, so what's NO2 doubled? N204. And that's how you can use the molecular, the molar mass to get from the empirical to the molecular formula.